In this second installment of 10 Years on Mars, Curiosity encounters a dangerous sand dune known as Dingo Gap, glimpses Earth in the sky, and observes a curious light on the horizon. Currently, Curiosity is traveling in the direction of Gale Crater's center peak. It has the ability to drive independently without assistance from Earth, which will make the voyage easier. The rover makes history when it drives autonomously for the first time on Sol 376. Because of the accelerated pace made possible by this, Curiosity is already getting close to the region known as Darwin. The location of the outcrop that researchers want to explore is indicated by the light tone streaks in the lower left corner of the image. From its new vantage point, Curiosity takes another look at the layers that make up Mount Sharp's base. This region, known as Pahrump Hills, appears to be very fascinating. The group intends to investigate this area soon. On Sol 400, Curiosity uses its Mars Hand Lens Imager, or MOLLE for short, to study the Darwin outcrop. A ridge can be seen in this four-image mosaic. It was created after a fissure in the underlying sandstone was filled with a substance that eroded more slowly than the rock itself. The Lincoln coin in the lower left corner serves as MOLLE's own calibration reference for scale. The ChemCam laser on the rover fires for the 100,000th time on the Martian surface as it examines the rock known as Ithaca. The arrows point to the 10 separate laser blasts darkened regions. Ithaca is a typical Martian volcanic rock type, according to analysis. After almost three miles of travel, life on Mars starts to have an impact on curiosity. A power outage is followed by other computer errors, leaving the rover briefly stranded. This is traced to a sporadic short in the nuclear power plant of the RTG Curiosity. At the same time, a situation far more dangerous develops. On Sol 469, a routine inspection of the rover's wheels reveals unexpectedly severe damage. We always anticipated that as we traveled, we would develop some holes in the wheels, according to Jim Erickson, project manager for the Curiosity rover. The surprise was simply in the scope of what we are witnessing. Out of concern, the team adjusts Curiosity's intended course, attempting to drive on sandier, smoother terrain. It will take longer to go to Mount Sharp, but maybe it will be safer for the rover. Along the new path, Curiosity encounters Harrison, a target with light-colored, elongated crystals that are most likely feldspar minerals. The darker matrix material, as determined by ChemCam analysis, is pyroxene, a mineral normally found in basaltic igneous rocks. Curiosity encounters yet another difficulty on Sol 526. The Dingo Gap sand dune must be crossed to reach Mount Sharp on the modified route. It will pave the way for a more level landscape, which should be less taxing on the rover's worn-out wheels. However, there is a chance that the rover could end up permanently stuck, much like Spirit, its forerunner on Mars. Curiosity is stargazing while the engineers at NASA get ready to traverse Dingo Gap. The rover photographs a Martian evening star shortly after sunset also known as the planet Earth. If you look attentively, you might be able to see our moon as well. Curiosity starts to pass Dingo Gap on Sol 535. A little off-roading proves to be no problem with 6x6 drive, as this image from the back hazard avoidance camera demonstrates. Curiosity looks back at its footprints left in the dangerous chasm. The distance between the parallel tracks is approximately 9 feet, or 2.7 meters, to provide some perspective. Curiosity makes strong progress after bridging the gap and is heading towards a region known as Kimberly. 
Curiosity notices these sandstone beds on the way to Kimberley, sloping down towards Mount Sharp from the Gale Crater Rim. These layers, according to the research team, are the result of deltas pouring from the crater's rim into a former lake that filled the crater's interior. It is a recurring motif in the neighborhood. Curiosity photographs a blazing light in the distance on Sol 589, shocking scientists. Scientists find the bright light mysterious. A cosmic ray hitting the camera or something as basic as sunlight reflecting off a rock are both potential answers. However, unless Martians wear tinfoil hats, this is most likely not our first encounter with alien life. A cosmic ray striking the camera is the most likely cause of the problem. High energy particles called cosmic rays travel through space. The fact that another photograph was shot with a separate camera at the exact same moment and did not record the strange anomaly, or in other words, was not struck by the same cosmic ray, makes this explanation the most credible. Even space workers have claimed to have witnessed odd light bursts with their own eyes, which are likewise thought to be cosmic ray strikes. A cosmic ray causes the eye's rods and cones to activate, giving the owner of the eye the impression of a flash of light that is actually not present. Thankfully, our magnetosphere shields us from cosmic radiation here on Earth. Mars, however, has a magnetic field that is far weaker. Future Martian colonists may simply have to put up with the weird pseudolites brought on by cosmic ray impacts. Investigations at Kimberley continue for a while since there is so much wonderful science there. The same build out of old sediment is visible in this Sol 590 view towards the base of Mount Sharp, with the mountain itself to the scene's left. In the middle ground, a tiny hill may be seen as well. The crew has given this location the nickname Mount Remarkable since the various rock layers are so obvious. On Sol 597, Curiosity is captured by NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter as it passes by the Kimberley site. Where is the rover? On Sol 609, Curiosity reaches a rock slab known as Winjana. The two-foot-wide boulder appears to be an excellent drilling target for Curiosity. The dust removal tool is used to clean a section of rock about 6 centimeters wide before test drilling is done to a depth of about 2 centimeters and a full-sized test hole is drilled. The ChemCam laser on Curiosity produced a string of black dots that can be seen inside the hole. Several of the onboard scientific instruments on Curiosity analyses the samples that were collected. Researchers back on Earth examine the findings and conclude that it is likely that flowing water was once a common occurrence in the region. Kimberly Curiosity strikes a selfie while beaming with satisfaction at its results. On Sol 648, Curiosity is observing the sun when it captures a spectacular image of an object that enters its frame of view. The first time a planetary transit has been seen on a planet other than Earth, this object is actually the planet Mercury. According to this map, by Sol 705, the rover is well on its way to the Pahrump Hills, which are located in the bottom left corner. The rover will pass through a valley appropriately dubbed Hidden Valley on its revised route, which is intended to make the trip easier on Curiosity's wheels. This new soft-sanded path is not without issues either. The rover's wheels appear to be slipping on the ground after traveling only a short way into the valley, and the team begins to worry that the rover may become stranded. Curiosity is instructed to depart the valley and return to more stable ground after the rover planners feel it is too unsafe to continue. In the following episode, Curiosity begins to flee from Hidden Valley and eventually makes it to the Pahrump Hills, where it sees a beautiful Martian sunset. To stay up to date on the most recent discoveries, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.